Hello, everybody, and good evening to you. Welcome to Songs from the Rural Room here, my YouTube channel dedicated to singer-songwriters from Belgium and beyond. While we're waiting for a few to gather, uh, I thought, you know, as some of you might be new to me and to this uh, project, I thought I'd uh, just introduce myself. Dahi Rula is my name. I'm an Irish singer-songwriter uh, living out here in Belgium. And uh, I put this project together a couple of years ago, uh, basically, as I said, to celebrate singer-songwriters from Belgium and beyond. And every so often then I do the odd live stream here, and uh, which here we are tonight. So I hope you're all doing fine and well in these uh, strange times. A um, couple of things we need to know. Um, this apparently is streaming to uh, the Facebook page as well tonight uh, at the Rua Room. You'll find it there now. They've uh, decided to start pulling these streams off Facebook recently, so that could happen tonight. If it does, please uh, find the YouTube channel, which is called this, Songs from the Rua Room. That's your best bet tonight in case we lose uh, the Facebook stream, um, which we, we may do. So just be warned about that. Um, as we go through the show, there may be the odd comment coming in from different places, which I could maybe stick up on the screen. And again, is there. And the bow Luke is there. So I won't, uh, probably won't interrupt our conversations with comments. But what I'll do is if you have comments, I'll probably put them up on the video as, uh, as, as Kieran is singing, just if you want to say something, um, unless it, of course, pertains directly to, to our uh, conversation. So that's something a little different uh, for tonight. Um, what else do we need to tell you? Yeah, uh, about the comments, yes. Um, of course, if you are watching on, on uh, YouTube, uh, please hit that subscribe button down there for me as well. That helps the channel uh, an awful lot um, and give the old video a thumbs up. And that helps me do what I'm doing. Uh, you're all very welcome to Songs from the Rural Room. We have, uh, we've have we got uh, about 34 live viewers now at the moment, which is brilliant. So um, I let that grow for a moment. We've got about six or seven guests tonight on the show, which I'll tell you all about in a moment, or as we go along anyway. I hope you're all doing fine and well. Let me just check a couple of things here. And yeah, I think the audio is coming through. Uh, fine and well according to the comments anyway um it looks like we are clear to go so as i said we may lose it from from uh, the uh, facebook stream i don't know but if you do this if you're on youtube already it doesn't matter thank you all for joining us here today dahi is my name and uh, welcome to songs from the Rua room and uh, without further ado grab yourself a little uh something of whatever ails you um and we shall remember the life and times of uh, a man that we lost uh, only four weeks ago tonight, uh, the late, great Kieran Halpin, um, a man with, uh, I think, at least 23 albums to his name and a few songbooks, a huge uh, amount of, a uh, huge body of work uh, behind him uh, from his first albums in 1979 up to, uh, which is Port of Call, of course, up to, up to uh, the album Doll, in 2017, I think 23 is the count, but I'm sure I'll be corrected on that if I'm if I'm wrong uh, as as we go along. So we're here tonight to remember Kieran and uh, Kieran Halpin and and his great great music and his legacy. And without further ado, what better way to start off uh, the show than to head over to? Well, he's normally in the north of England. I think he's in the south of England tonight. Um, the wonderful Tom McConville is here, and uh, let's. Welcome him to the show. Are you there, Tom? Hello, hello. How are you guys? doing, sir? Absolutely fine, thank you. Uh, I'm in. I'm in Cornwall. I mean, I don't care. It's all the same, Cornwall, England, to me. You know, is I'm it, a Jody. Is but I think our Cornish, our Cornish friends get awful touchy about being in England. Do, do they? <laughs> I, I, must I mean, ask... that's their fault, you know. That's <laughs> their fault. <laughs> I want to ask Sarah about that if she's if she's touchy about stuff like that. She yeah. she'll set us right later later on. You um yeah. you, you toured with the man from the beginning, Tom. Um, yeah, great, great to have yeah. you on the show, by the way. But uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. I mean, well, nineteen seventy nine okay, or well um, before? I, well, the album was nineteen seventy nine, but I suppose you, you you toured with them before that. I did, yeah. Um, I first met Kieran um down in in Leeds actually. Some friends of mine run a folk club there, uh, Steve and uh, and and his Mrs. Rosie, and mm. uh, Kieran was just uh, touring on his own, and um, it was 1977, I think, and we got together for a few tunes. Um, he arrived at my house um, with, I think, about 10p in his pocket, 10 pence, and uh, 
he said, do you want to go to Holland? I said, yeah, fair enough. So we went mm. off to Holland in 1977. We had some gigs. John Strong helped set up that. And um, we arrived in Holland with, uh, I think, 40 pence between us <laughs> uh, and uh, a couple of cracker biscuits. And the tank was on empty. Mm. And, uh, of course, when you went into Holland in those days, you know, um, the, the, the fellas in charge, the, the police, they'd say, how much money do you have? And Kieran says, you've got to tell them you got 40 quid. I says, Jesus, I've never had 40 quid from a game. <laughs> like, said, no. So we got we got the, <laughs> both of us lying to hell. Like, yeah, 40 pounds we have, 40 pounds each. And so we were let in, and we arrived in Amsterdam, and the needle on the on the petrol was on right down the bottom. So we, we pulled up to John Strong's, and he lent us 25 guilders, and we got the breakfast and all that. Wow. The first gig that night, I couldn't believe it because um, Kim said, go and get the drinks. And I said, well, I don't have any money. He says, no, it's free. The drink's free and the tobacco costs nothing. So <laughs> that was wonderful. I thought it arrived in heaven. But um, we were very much um, a road duo. We learned all our stuff on the road. And uh, we were very, very passionate about what we did, you know. But there's lots and lots of funny stories, which I can't regale you with them all tonight. <laughs> One in particular, which I, I really loved, was um, Kieran was very fond of having a drink or two, you know, and um, as I was myself. And sure. um, the only problem was he was a bit of a, um, he was a bit of a non-starter, you know, he couldn't really do it. I had to train him up, like, but uh, anyway, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> one night um, he was staying at the top of this house. And, uh, you know, these Dutch houses are wonderful, very mm. tall, lots of stairs. And um, and somebody says, Kieran's upstairs in there. I said, oh, all right, okay, I lost him last night. So I went up the top of the stairs, top of the house, knocked on the door, went in, and there's Kieran in bed. And he had a bicycle in bed with him, <laughs> like a green, a brand new green bicycle. <laughs> so I said, uh, Halpern, what the, um, <clears throat> are you doing? He said, Jesus, what's that? And says, I says, a little it appears it's a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> and what had happened, he'd been he'd been in Folk Fairport, we'd been in there, and yeah. the uh he'd, he'd bought this bike bicycle off a guy who um um I think was probably taken from somewhere <laughs> for 25 guilders, and he rode it home. I don't know how he did that, and uh, so that nobody else could steal the bike, he dragged <laughs> it up the stairs and put it in bed next to him. So there we are. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't make it up Tom. fantastic no that's right i must tell you one more story because you Please. know um as you'll know from kieran's songs and his early music here yeah, like all of us like he was um inflicted uh, afflicted i should say uh <laughs> by the um by our christian background you know the the mm. uh, christian brothers and all the rest of the stuff that went with that yes indeed. which we won't go into anyway one night he was he, um uh, the early hours of the morning we used to do a lot of playing in folk fairport i don't know if you went there Dahi, um, Never been but it was, no it was um it was basically an excuse to have a good drink because you didn't get paid much money but we were in there till three in the morning you know yeah, yeah. and we lo and john strong was there we did we did a few gigs with john as well and um we lost Kieran, and John said, um, in his in his great Yorkshire accent, yeah, "Where's Where's Alpen gone to?" And uh, we so it was snowing outside. Now the folk fairport was on the Princeton Gracht, and um, the part the cars would be parked side on to the canal. So we hmm. were very worried about him. It was snowing, and um, eventually we were shouting, "Kieran, Kieran!" And then we just heard this mumbling, and we went down about ten cars down, and there was Alpen. Kneeling down in the snow, um, <laughs> praying, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with Kieran, F off, he says, Hail Mary, full of grace. <laughs> <laughs> so what was going on through his head, God knows, anyway. Who knows? First time for everything. Of, a couple of them, I'd say, yeah. A couple of stories here, anyway. There we are. Ah, brilliant. Thanks for sharing those, Tom. That's fantastic. And not at but, all. Um, we was, were very close. We were like brothers. Um, you were. Brothers against the world, you know. Um and I don't know a great deal now at the moment, I at this time in my life. I'm 70 on uh, Friday. But even then, I knew even less anyway. But uh, <laughs> I, knew that, I knew that I loved Kieran and uh, I loved his songs. And uh, and I did my best to um, to accompany him on them, you know, and try to get yeah, inside the words. Because um, I'm an unusual fiddle player, as I said to you the other day, in that I was yeah. brought up with songs. 
<laughs> you were rather than tunes. And, uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. I mean, most people expect fiddlers to grow up in, in the fiddling tradition, but you, you didn't yeah, really. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I had all that as well, but um, I grew up in a pub in Newcastle. Now, the pub's still there. If ever you get there, um, well, give us a ring if ever you get to South Shields oh, in, in Newcastle. But um, the pub's called The Globe, and it's a jazz pub now. And uh, I got a call um, a few months ago from a guy there. It's like a co op now, and he says, Will you come and do a gig? And I said, well, I thought it was a jazz pub. He says, ah, there won't know the difference here anyway. So, uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but um, the, uh, that's where I was brought up. And um, the, 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 there was lots and lots of singing in there. My father played the piano and uh, my mother played the piano and the accordion. And uh, so I was, but all the guests, um, we didn't have anybody especially a brilliant singer. We had a great um, drummer who played the drums and the mouth organ. But the only problem was to play them both together, he had to take his false teeth out <laughs> to play the to play the, the harmonica. <laughs> it was great fun. Anyway, but um, everyone, there was, there was nobody great at singing, but I uh, tell you what, they were passionate. They're all mad Geordies, Scots yes. and Irish in there. Oh, wow. and, uh, so it was a real mixture. Um, it sounds like of, some party. But it was great. And so that that I grew up with the passion of the songs. So um, I kind of had the feel for the songs. I mean, all the all the fiddling stuff, well, that just goes on and on. And you yeah. learn from the musicians that went that came through Newcastle and then I went to, to Ireland, etc. you know. Mm. But um, I'd always had a and, – and in a lot of the sessions that we went to, um, we always um, would, would stop the tunes, God forbid, but we stopped the tunes and would have a song. And Kieran and I used to go to a pub um, in Leeds called The Regent, and that was great fun. A lot of Irish people in there. And uh, you had that thing, you know, which I'm sure you've seen before, Danny, where someone would say, right, shut up now, we're going to have a song. <laughs> uh, Kieran, sing a song. Yeah. 53 in the fact. Shut up now, everybody, shut up. And all the <laughs> way through the song. Good man, yeah. shut up. 53 in the fact of his clothes. And shut up now with the lad singing. And it went on all the way through the song. And we... we, we <laughs> <laughs> we learned to uh, to enjoy that and the love care and singing in there. Oh, and that's the very first time I heard um, the trip through Hollyhead, which I recorded subsequently, you know, well, with Kieran. You know. How did the um, the album come about uh, for both of you? The Port of Call. Port of Call, yeah. Um, well, it actually, it's it, the story is um, we were trying to get a deal with Rubber Records, with Jeff Hosler Heslop and the lads, and they were lovely lads. And Rubber Records were quite famous because Mike Harden had recorded the Rochdale Cowboy with them, and uh, he'd made, he'd made, um, you know, it got into the charts and everything, and Mike did very well. And um, and Bob Fox and Stu Luckley were were um, were on their label as well. So we wanted to get a deal with them. So Kieran came from Nuremberg. For one gig, typical Kieran, he came yeah. from Nuremberg for one gig in Sunderland, uh, which is just south of Newcastle. And the boss of Rubber Records came down to inspect the gig, you see. So, mm. <laughs> uh, and we never heard anything from it. So we were quite fed up about that. And we went immediately and um, drank a lot of whiskey and went home. Um, but when we got to um, when we got to Germany, we had about a 10 week tour. Um, of just playing all the time, a lot yeah. of the time, nowhere to stay and all that business, you know, all that mm. boring business, uh, just Rough. basically roughing it. Like, mm. um, but we got a call from Robert Eckhart saying they wanted to do the album. So uh, Kieran says, well, if we're going to do this album, we better get the stuff studio standard, you know. So we practiced and practiced and practiced the harmonies and got all the, all the technical bits right. But then we had these millions of gigs on top. Oh. Which basically, by the time we'd finished the gigs, we couldn't have cared whether it was right or wrong. We just yeah. played it, you know. <clears throat> it wasn't. Um, it's not a technically clever album or anything like that, but it's it's got a lot of charm and it's very passionate. And I, I still love it today. You know, it's very very heartfelt, especially Kieran's. I think the strength of the duo, and not not um, knocking myself because I'm very proud of the tunes I put down. But I yes. think the strength of Kieran and I was the. Um, was his songs and, and my accompaniment to them. And uh, it, we ended up getting on Cambridge Folk Festival. And um, oh, you've got it on there now. I'm going to give it a spin now in a moment, yeah, after your story, yeah. Okay. No <coughs> Excuse me. And um, we ended up on Cambridge Folk Festival uh, and they did a live recording of Tim Wood's song, Freeman, you know. And um, 
we enjoyed, we enjoyed that very much. Sorry, Sorry, you've got the thing on there now. Yeah. No, that's I didn't want to interrupt you at all. I was just lining Not it up because I'm going to I'm going to play it uh, you now. Tom, know, that uh, that that particular song. Uh, we're going to yeah. we're going to have the low road from Port of Call, okay. and uh, I want to thank you so very very much for uh, your time here tonight. Not at all. Um, I wish I could talk to you, and I might do. We might do a, a longer interview down the road. Who knows? It'd be great to, to, to hear more. Yeah. Um, yes. I have, I have right, obviously a, 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 a list of guests to get through, which I will. And I want to thank you so, so very much for opening the show here tonight. Uh, yeah, um, and and great stay, stay safe and well and keep up the good, good yourself. work. Good luck to everybody else. All the very best. Cheers now. Bye bye. Here we are, folks. The brilliant and marvelous Tom McConville. Right. Here we go. The low road, folks, from the brilliant. Kieran Hoppen and Tom McConville. My conscience will guide me through many to star. I've nothing against you, but the way you turned against me, and I've nothing to leave you but memories. Now sad is the heart that at once held you sacred. And lost is the soul I gave you to mine. Far gone is the loving that flowed deep between us. And long is the day and the night time. It's not for the want of a walk in my debut. It's not that adventure has led me away. But the sunlight has set on a sudden horizon. And this ship is leaving the bay. I pray, given time, you may learn to forgive me. I pray, given time, I may learn to forget. For true love runs roughly, and you and I stumble. And now it's with sadness I leave you. My conscience will guide me through many the star. I've nothing against you, but the way you turned against me, and I've nothing to leave you but memories. And I've nothing against you, but the way you turned against me. And I've nothing to leave you but
Beautiful. Thank you so much again to Tom McConville <clears throat> for sharing his stories there um, and uh, that wonderful track from the album Port of Call. I am going up to <clears throat> Bonnie Deutschland <clears throat> and my friend Chris Link is up here. All going to plan. Are you there, Chris? Hi, mate. <laughs> Guten Abend, sir. Hello. <laughs> How you doing? <clears throat> Fine. So far. So, so far, so good. You, 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 had a, you had a small touch of Corona, I heard. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. But everything's but fine. Yeah, you're no, fine and dandy. No symptoms at all. Yeah. Good man. Amazing yeah. too, eh? No symptoms and still no symptoms. Crazy, I'm liking me. Where did you first hear uh Tom? You're you're a fan of uh, of uh you're a fan of Kieran's music for a long time. I always said Tom McConville there. But yeah, you, you would have known uh, and heard Kieran in, in Solingen, is that correct? Or yeah, yeah. There was a time when I constantly went to local pubs to see musicians on stage. And after seeing Kieran for the first time, he became kind of favorite. Don't know. Yeah. Um, I went to all his gigs in the area, if ever possible. And actually, it was Klaus Kremer and, and Susi Kremer. I told you about. Mm. Um, they were friends of Kieran, and and they made him famous here. And. Uh, yeah, so I got in touch with what, Kieran. what year would have been that? What, what are you talking 90s or are you talking what kind of era? That that whole pub area, uh, pub era was uh, between the mid 90s, mid 90s to until 2010, 11, don't know. And then, All right. and then most of, of the venues got closed, so it all went down a bit. Oh, uh, yeah. Was that just to do with the uh, with the economy? You mean, or no other issues? That... Just stuff happened, yeah, and, and yeah, venues yeah, yeah, changed yeah. and closed. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Remember on that area era, a lot of, uh, especially in Germany, there were a lot of Irish bars in particular opening and closing. You know, every yeah. every week. I suppose that that's probably what you're referring to. Um, uh, but I, I I did I did remember that uh, that era. Of course, I was out in Holland mainly myself. Not so much in Germany that at that time, but. You know, our paths would have crossed, and um, probably in Amsterdam, mm. probably in in Mulligans or somewhere yeah. along the, along the way back in the day, um, and then of course you're 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 a guitarist as well, of course, but you're a fan of Chris Jones, you were saying. Oh yeah, yeah, but yeah. As far as I remember, I only saw Chris once at the same place. It was also Klaus Kremer who who introduced me to his music. Yeah, that's it, and. Um, the last time I met Kieran, uh, it would be 10 years next year in January. Well, we had a lot um, that was in the Tom Bombardier, which is also closed now for a year or so. And uh, we had a longer chat. And this was the last time I ever met Kieran. And uh, as I mentioned, just a week or so be before his passing, he would have been the one who would have. Who, whom would I, I like to have seen when this pandemic yeah. thing is over? Just thinking about this last gig and yeah, and friends just and was this song "Long Lost Friends" and yeah, after, um, and just a week later, Kieran was gone. So. Or Sad times, yeah, yeah. Or, you were only you were yeah. only saying a week before yeah. he he passed how, how great it would be to 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 catch a gig again. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, ironic uh, and sad in a way, yeah. but uh, yeah. Unfortunately, what can we do? What can we do? I'm what reading comments over here as well uh, as <laughs> as we go along as we go along. So yeah, but you, you 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 um I hope um that your neck of the woods. I uh, hope the bars will open up again after this pandemic and we'll get to. We'll get to, we'll get to uh, hear some Hopefully. nice gigs yeah. and maybe play yeah. some nice yeah. gigs up there. Yeah. Um, you, uh, I, 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 you, you chose a song. You chose a song, "Letter to America," which is which I love and kind of a very appropriate song uh, the night before uh, uh, an election yeah. in, in America. If it's uh, perfect. Yeah. If it's perfectly, yeah. What, yeah. what, what is the, what is it that you that you found? What do you like about the song, and and what kind of drew you to Kieran as a performer? Actually, 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 I like the whole album. Uh, this mm. uh, a box of of words and tunes. It's my yeah. favorite since me too. Don't know, fifteen years. And uh, 
My favorite is uh, the singing boots, but uh, as, I, as I had to as I had to realize, it's not available on YouTube. So, yeah, we have to try and find YouTube yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. you see, there's so much. Yeah, try to get this album. It's fantastic, excellent. It is a fantastic album, indeed. Yeah, yeah. It sure, it, it sure is. Um, let me try and uh, load this one up now uh, with a uh, that has a little bit of. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Um, mm, 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 letter to America. Uh, where are we? There we are. So I need to share the audio. That's what I did wrong the last time. Yeah. So this is um, this is the song. That's it. That's the one. But before I play it, I want to thank you very much for coming on to talk to us. I know you're a huge fan of Kieran and thanks for so many many times in in in, in Germany, honest. and I hope. I hope you and I will meet up as well, uh, either in Germany or Belgium one of these days. We will, Chris, definitely. and uh, and uh, you know, we we'll, fingers crossed for 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 the Americans and their uh, their election tomorrow as well. Who knows? Who knows? We have to wait and see. But look, enjoy the rest of the show, Chris. Thank you so much for for for, for, for the few lovely words there. I'm going to play thank this song. I'm going to play this song for you. Letter letter to America, Kieran Halpin, folks. Uh, great, great song. He never, he was never one to shy away from uh, political issues, and I love that about him. Letter to America. Thank you. See you, Chris. Thank you. Right. You used to ride across the prairie, rescue pilgrims from the hordes. Now you're carpet bombing by day. We don't trust you anymore. They read the sports pages in Richmond. They watch the news on Fox TV. They're told they're fighting Al Qaeda. They're going to bomb the whole world free. Where are you now, brave Superman? We need your honor and your glory. We need some help to understand. As I was driving through Virginia, I heard this battle cry for war. We love and trust our great white leader. But I don't trust him anymore. And now you conquer the Iraqis. What border are you marching for? Korea or Saudi Arabia. We don't trust you anymore. Where are you now, bold baby Crockett? Where are you now, brave Superman? We need your honor and your glory. We need some help to understand. I hold no love for cruel dictators. I don't espouse the terrorist cause. Do not lie to all the innocent. They don't recognize your love. You used to fight those commie bastards. But you got lost in Vietnam. You say you seek a safer future. Found your way, you found Saddam. Where are you now? 
Uh, the fantastic song. I, 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 I made a stab at covering that myself a couple of times. I love it. One of his, uh, I love his political driven, dr politically driven stuff anyway, but that's certainly one of mine. And thanks very much to Chris Link over in Germany for that lovely introduction to, uh, to that song and a few lovely words about Kieran Halpin. We have, we're going to go over to the Netherlands and we have the mighty Willem. Where are you, Willem? Let hey. me see. There he is. Hi, Radagi. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are things? Good, good. Which part of Holland are you in? Uh, the north, Groningen. Up the top. Oh, we have yeah, another Groningen. Up, yeah. Ah, yeah. There's a couple of Groningers on the show tonight. And yeah. you, um, tell us a little bit about the, the the where you met Kieran for the first time. You you ran clubs in the Netherlands. Some great. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think I think I met Kieran uh, the, for the first time in the seventies in Amsterdam. In a folk song cafe at Kloppertje. But we, yeah. we talk about that. And Kieran said, okay, I've been there. But then he has long hair and not bald. And <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can't remember. I see so many people there. And, yeah. and, and, and later on, uh, I saw him for the first time. Uh, by Hans and Marie in, in uh, Schildwolde in the pub. Uh, together with uh, Chris Jones. And a lot of times solo. I've seen him uh, in Steendam. I've seen him in uh, Nieuwe Schans. Uh, I've so seen many, lots and lots of gigs. But and you booked him yourself, huh? You ran, didn't you? You you, you ran a club. Or, yeah. Now for for Nieuwe Schans, yeah. they asked me if I if I will book the, the artist. Yes. And I said for myself, come on, I've worked enough. Yeah. <laughs> but you have more time to say you can't play here then. Please, will you play here? Yeah, there are so many yeah. artists who want to play there. Yeah, that's, that's but it, so yeah, it, it's it's great. It is it's it's such fine. The the places where I go to uh, are also the the pubs where the, you come for the music, not for the drinking. Oh yeah, yeah? of course. So of course. It, it's 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 this, the people are quiet. Shut their mouths when you play it. Yeah, that's what and we you, want. I know you also, but the, the most like that very much. They they they, they don't know what Americans. Ask also us, uh, don't you like it? Why? Mm. Because you don't talk, yeah? That's, and that's right. for us normal, that's but for them it is. But it was great, yeah, great to see Kieran and, and with so many other artists, yeah. He always he always had a great uh, he always had great gigs in in the Netherlands as well yeah, uh, yeah. as well as Germany and and uh, I brought him to Belgium only once I think he did a couple of gigs in Belgium um, yeah he did but uh, definitely Belgium and, and uh, Germany and Holland were his his, his, his big big he was very successful in those yeah areas yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you also mentioned a song that we're going to play later um, called So Long John um, tell us about that as well. Please. Yeah, because when uh, when uh, the first time in, in Holland I met in, in Schildwolde, that was John Wright band, and John Wright sing a lot of songs from Kieran also. Mm. And when John died, also at once, yeah, uh, there was uh, in Newcastle uh, a celebration, and Kieran made the song "So Long John" for John Wright, and that was for me such a big song and the first. In my head, when I heard Kieran is died, it says, "Okay, so long, Kieran." Yeah, so long, it's, Kieran. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's, a it's a great song, and, and and I love them very much, and and and, and yeah, a great a great singer, a great performer. Yeah, absolutely, great guy. Willem. Yeah, absolutely, Willem. You're 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 nail on the head, as we say. Yeah, you're yeah. nail on the head. Are you still actively involved? Well, prior to Corona, were you still involved a lot in the music scene in Holland? With no. Uh, Everything is closed. 
Mm, and before yeah, that, but I mean before yeah. Corona, where you? Oh, be- before Corona, yeah, I I go uh, every Friday. I was by Peter O'Leary in Steendam. Yeah? Sure, yeah, when I see a lot of artists, uh, I, I sell Peter made more than three hundred eighty concerts in that time. Yeah? yeah, and I've seen so many from England. Uh, uh, now you were there, uh, Kieran was a lot yeah. of times there. Uh, Sarah McRae, yeah, um, uh, Lucy Ward, and all the other girls, yeah, from America also. Yeah, and you're I, it was, it was so such a nice people I never heard. Yeah, uh, Susan Savage from Ireland. Yeah, nice, uh, amazing. We too. never heard of them. She she stayed there with her uh, with her uh, classical uh, gigs, and she she sings the mic. She takes from the mouth and. Yeah, she's really powerful. Put your arm so far yeah. away and what a yeah, voice yeah, yeah. and, and uh, she's, she's great. She's extremely powerful, yeah. wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, a great, you're a great uh, follower of, of uh, good music, uh, Willem, and uh, we thank you for that. Uh, you've, you've, you've supported me and a lot of, and Kieran, lots of lots of great artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. When, we come, when we come to the north, and uh, so we, uh, for, we'll say, th- say thank you as well publicly for that and just to uh, acknowledge it and to say thanks. But, okay. um I much appreciate you being on the show and giving us a few words and a few thoughts about our beloved Kieran tonight, Willem. Um, okay. Let me find your song. Uh, so long, John, you, you, you said. And he, he, I'm not sure where this gig is from. Uh, in, in Moist Corner. He spoke about this gig to me yeah. last time we met and, and how great a gig it was as well. In, in, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's in Germany, um, maybe could be Austria, but in Moist Corner. This is So Long, John, and we'll we'll dedicate this to you and Kieran tonight. Willem Nordstrand, heartlich bedankt. Okay, and, uh, die, die, thank you. Ha- thank you for being here. Okay, bye-bye. Good night to you, mate. This is a song I wrote for my friend John Wright just after he died. And it's a song called So Long, John. <laughs> from nowhere from the lowland border hills the shepherd still within you oh but you had more to give you sang out like an angel In a voice we all could share You stood beneath the spotlight Like a soldier never scared Some will miss the singer Many will miss the song But I will miss my friend So long, John We often shared a bottle Sometimes white and sometimes red You asked me for direction You never saw the road ahead Some will miss the singer And many will miss the song But I will miss my friend 
so long to John. Now some they have the stories. Many hear what they want to see. But your family has your laughter and your memory. Some will miss the singer and many will miss the song. But I will miss my friend so long, John. So I miss the singer, and many will miss the song. But I will miss my friend. So long, John. So long, John. So long, John. So long, John, and so long, Kieran. Gorgeous, gorgeous song. Thank you, Willem Nordstrand, for uh, recommending that great, uh, great, great number. And uh, indeed, a beautiful, beautiful song. So um, thank you. If you've uh, stayed with us up to this point, fair play to you. Uh, you're watching songs from the Rua Room here on my YouTube channel, dedicated to singer-songwriters from Belgium and beyond. Tonight we're, we're, uh, we're talking about and remembering the great, great the uh, late great Kieran Halpin. Now we're going to go back to England, Bunny England, uh, definitely South England this time. And we have the marvellous Sarah McQuaid all going to plan. Are you there, darling? Hello. Oh, indeed. Hello. How are you doing, Great darling? to see you. Welcome and, and good you. evening to you. Which part of England are you in? I'm way what? down in the very far southwest down in Cornwall. Cornwall, um, beautiful part of the world. It is indeed. Same part of the uh, of England that Tom's in, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, your neighbours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Yeah, that's right. Because he was. Yeah, I don't know if he might. He might look you up and you know come looking for you. I don't know. Or maybe he just disappear back. He seems to be well, locked I'm down. Not see anybody now? So no, it's of course. Locked down. <laughs> yeah, he seems to be locked oh, down. Well. He, he when we did our sound check, he said he was he was heading back up north, but plans changed. Stuff changed. Mm -hmm. So he yeah. he's he's in Cornwall, but he could be in the worst place. He could be in the worst place. Oh God, yeah, no, it's a absolutely. Place to be. I'm so I feel really lucky actually to be here. <laughs> yes, indeed, you're 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 on the road many many years, Sarah, and yeah. uh, a wonderful guitarist and, and singer songwriter, of course. In case people don't know you, um, but yeah, tell me about your first your first uh, encounter or meeting with 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 uh, the with the great Kieran. Well, it was in 2009, and um, I wasn't I wasn't long being kind of a solo artist at that point i'd you know i played in bands and then i'd had a big long break from music yeah. and then i got invited to to play at the green farm festival in uh, just near munich germany and and at, the, at that point i was you know i didn't have a tour manager or anything i was traveling on my own and i flew over to germany and i was met at the airport and brought to the hotel and checked in and i you know it was one of these i, I you know standard mm. issue german budget hotels kind of you know, very clean, but, yeah. but kind of grim, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, not grim the way budget American hotels are, are, no. are grim, which is involves cockroaches and things. And this is very, <laughs> it was lovely. Everything was clean and tidy and everything. But, you know, just this carrot featureless room, lino and very small and narrow little bed. And, you know, and uh, and I sat down, I thought, well, you know, I wasn't due to actually perform at the festival to the following day. And this is like it was like five in the evening or something. Yeah. Okay, now what do I do? And um, just as I was sitting there, sort of contemplating my options, you know, um, 
and reflecting on the fact that I was in this place and knew not a soul, um, there was a knock at the door and yeah. I panicked because I thought, oh God, I've got no German, you know, <laughs> but it's somebody from the hotel and they started, <laughs> and, um, and uh, I opened the door and and there was this very familiar looking bloke standing there and I thought, why does he look so fit? And he said, hi, I'm Kieran Halpham. And I, and I oh God, of course you are, <laughs> hello. <laughs> and he said, I hope you don't mind. I, I, you know, I heard you were staying here as well. So I, I just found out where you were and um, do you wanna come and have a drink in the bar? And I was just so pathetically grateful to him because suddenly from yeah, yeah. facing into this long evening in this pokey little hotel room on my own, um, I got to go down and, and and have a lovely chat with Kieran and it was just so nice and it just transformed the whole kind of experience of playing at yeah. the festival, you know, because then I arrived at the festival site and Kieran is like, oh, do you know this person? Do you know that person? And, you know, it was, it was, and it was just really lovely of him. And after that, we always kind of made a point of trying to, to meet up um, any, you know, anytime our kind of paths cross. Yeah. I've got a photo actually, which I, you know, I'm trying to get up on my iPad. And this oh, is- Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Just up the road from where Karen used to live in Scotland, I was doing a gig up um, at a folk club in Denholm in Scotland, mm. and um, and I'd said to Karen, I'd give you, I'd, we'd always send each other our tour schedules and try and find places where they would intersect, right. and uh, and um, and uh, he said I, I actually had a night off, and um, and so we met up at the pub and 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 had a drink, and I've got the picture up on the iPad, so I'll show it. I'll share it with you. Oh yeah, sweet, uh, lovely. It. It's a long time ago. <laughs> but, okay, so I yeah, I, I thought that that photograph was actually from the German uh, gig, but it was no, no, it wasn't. no, no. I didn't have any from the festival, um, but but uh, by the time that picture was taken, I was traveling with my wonderful. Yeah. Um, sound engineer and tour manager martin and he took the photos <laughs> martin is great he's a, he's a yes he, he's oh, a hard-working man martin tell him what you said very, hello he's a brilliant yeah. great that you have such a great engineer with you on the road it makes such I'm a difference yeah you're very lucky um what do you what do you think he he had as a as a singer songwriter you, you've been in the game a long time there was something magical obviously about his songs and yeah yeah really his personality magical. you know he, he had a well he, was, he had an introverted he did he's present on stage Mm. Uh, and then off stage, a little bit more introverted, I found. But I, I don't think know if we're you all found like that, that too. I think a lot I, of us are. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, pra practically every um, performer I know is like that. You kind of, in a way, I almost wonder are we driven to perform because it's a way of getting ourselves out of ourselves? If you know what yeah. I mean. <laughs> That's not I know, what, I know what you mean. Yes. But, yeah. but it's <laughs> like I can only kind of, I can only really communicate on stage and then off stage i get quite shy and nervous and a yeah, bit awkward right. and kind of clumsy <laughs> yes it, it's it's a, it's a, it's a strange one but I, yeah kieran kieran had that as well uh very much it was very but yeah, he was just a wonderful presence on stage and a beautiful songwriter i mean his songs yeah. it's the i mean it was lovely singer and performer as well but just the songs, they yeah. really stick in your head and they really hit your emotional core. I mean, the one Don't they that just... I picked for, for us to listen to, you know. Um, yeah, you picked one from the older days. From yeah. from the... Sorry, Tom. Yeah, <laughs> with, with, with Tom's lovely playing. I mean, I, I loved yeah. what Tom yeah. said earlier. He yeah, said, yeah, put that um, up on screen. Say oh, that again. What, was it? what was it he said? He said he, said he tried, he, well, it was Tom said it himself. He said, when I'm playing, I'm trying to get inside the words. And that's I thought, well, that's, that's yes. exactly what he did. He said he gets inside the words, and 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 his fiddle playing on this particular track um, really, really stands out too. As does Kieran singing, and just the words—they're so powerfully emotionally affecting these words. And I, when I was listening to the song, I cried, and I'll probably cry again. So. Will you? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll put you off camera when you're doing that, right? When you're crying, yeah, <laughs> do it during the video. <laughs> you can do it now if you like. Yeah, don't mind. I'm yeah. not going to censor <laughs> anybody tonight, so you know, feel free to shed it here. Have a drink, you know. Let's let's celebrate. His we're here to celebrate him and to you know Indeed. to uh, to shed a tear and, so and to hear his song. Thank you for doing this. It's, it's really lovely that you absolutely are. welcome. It's it's uh, you know we we became close around 2013 ourselves, and I tried to get him some gigs, and we we hung out, and you know to have somebody like Kieran happen suddenly, hmm. you know, I suppose when you do it long enough, some some of these people become your friends eventually. But yeah. but it was wonderful that. Uh, that I got a a chance to to meet the man and and know him a little bit on a personal level, you know. Yeah, he was a really he was generous such a, soul. That yes, way. he was very much so, a generous soul. Indeed, he was. Um, and I'm going to 
load up your song here before we say goodbye to you. It's it's you picked hard luck stories from yeah. the from the Tom Campbell album, and uh, wonderful, wonderful choice of song, indeed, uh, from Port of Call. But Sarah, look, we'll we'll get together and we'll do a, a longer interview, hopefully down the road, maybe because uh, you have some you've stuff coming out in the near future as well, don't you? I do, yeah. I've got a um, a live in lockdown album coming out. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> it'll, it'll probably the album won't be out till next year, but we're doing a kind of a series of videos because what I did was I pref- I I recorded and had um, a really a couple of really wonderful. Um, a filmmaker called Morgan Lewis and a wonderful camera operator, uh, operator also called John Crooks and Martin came and did the recording and we went into St. Burian Church, which is this lovely, lovely church by where I live. And, and we just recorded a whole concert with no audience. Fabulous. So. With no audience. Just let her, let her rip. Mm. Well, look, um, the very best to look at that. We'll talk, we'll talk more about that uh, closer to the time. We'll do a, a little yeah. raving with rural stream and we'll, we'll get into the nitty gritty of that, as I say, but in the meantime, have a lovely evening. Stay safe over there in, in Cornwall. Look after yourself, Sarah, and thanks for being here tonight. Thanks a million, Dave. It's lovely to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. And life holds no surprises, no more compromises. Don't you realize you're throwing it all away? Life holds memories of slavery. Your days held nightmares of bought and sold. You've run time's gauntlet, you've won the right to be free. You lost your tongue, but not your soul. Now no more wars need fighting, no more wrongs need righting, no more plague will blight you've only yourself to blame and life holds no surprises no more compromises don't you realize you're throwing it all away and they've no more lies to tell you no more dreams to sell you no more will help you only yourself to blame and life holds no surprises no more compromises don't you realize Beautiful again, lads. Uh, thank you so very much to Sarah McQuay there and for choosing that beautiful song. 
uh that's absolutely gorgeous uh always love that album too um tom mcconville and kieran halpin we're going over back to groningen there's a lovable lefty up here uh called lucas lucas sterk uh lucas the lovely lefty are you there sir come in over i am here now Ducky. i am yeah Look at you. Great, right, Jacob, but you look at them. Which look at you. <laughs> all of these all of these Groningans are flying the flag for Groningen tonight. You're very welcome on the show. Uh, Lucas, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. How are you? I sure I'm tipping on. You're pulling the devil by the tail, as we say, yeah. down here. Yeah, in the middle yeah. of uh, um, you know, lockdown and trying to get this rural room built and, and taking over my lovely ladies uh living room these days doing these streams well, I, soon soon i'll be up I, I, got, the... I, I have to say on behalf of i think of everybody um thanks so much for having this do today yeah? and it's a it's a wonder a month's mind is it's, it's a, in a way it's a wonderful thing because you're over the first fright of uh, yeah. the shock and you have the time to reminiscence is the word and just let it all sink in and think of the times and the, the long the long haul that it's been and it, it's been a long and winding road and yes well all, thank you all the stories and all the songs are wonderful tonight thank you very much you're very welcome lucas and and uh, you know he was a friend of mine and friend of all of ours and uh, lovely to to yeah just take a little time out as you say a month's mind uh, yeah not that we'll ever forget him or and of course the songs are going to live, live no, forever no, no. and ever and ever anyway um but just how nice to to get together with a few people you know i, I could you have were say, uh, you were, you were saying something very interesting just before when you're talking to the lovely sarah um you said that um you met kieran when in 2013 and before that you as an aspiring songwriter you had been looking up to him in a way can, can yeah. you tell us some more about that whose interview is this now lucas my <laughs> 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 yes, of course I, I can. Of I course, putting you on the spot here. Yeah, no uh, problem. Yeah. No, well, you know, um, before I mean, I wasn't even writing songs to probably late nineties myself. You know, uh, right, properly, yeah. properly since two thousand. You right, know, so yeah. so to know to, I grew up listening to Kieran Happen songs before I even knew who Kieran Happen was. You know, sister and brother, Dolores Kane. Um, yeah, yeah, of for, course. Uh, to one one of the examples. So yeah. I, I, you know, I I came to songs. Uh, and songwriters through other people singing them, Mary Black, Christy Moore, you know, yeah. the singers, uh, the singers yeah. of the world. Um, yeah. Before I started dipping my own uh, toes into the world of songwriting, yeah. So um, I, uh, Kieran, Kieran just kind of, you know, when I said, oh, he wrote that song, suddenly I was trying to get hold of all of his albums and, and, and to research the man. So that's what I mean by, you know, I looked up to him completely because, uh, uh, you know, when you're a, uh, you're, a singer songwriter you you have to aspire to people you have to kind of well this is this is a good song what's good about it and and how can i as a songwriter try to even match that if that makes any sense so i suppose that's where it's it coming from and then and then as i was saying to sarah over the years then i suppose like i said if you do stuff if you do this long enough you eventually your heroes sometimes become your friends and kieran is a prime example of that you know if you're lucky yeah <laughs> or um, yeah, like, yeah or yeah well that was it you know we we, we uh we all know our place in the business and, and the levels that we're on. Yes, and it's just great yes, to, yes, to be able yes, to go, yes, well, yes. can I can I as a songwriter write a, a song as good as Kieran Halpin or Tom Pacheco, whoever we're talking dare about? Dare I stand, dare I stare stand I, in his shadow, that type yeah, of thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So which part oh, of Dublin are you from anyway? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the north. I'm from the you're north. from the north, I figured that, yeah. Tell us your Dublin story. Tell us your, tell us your Kieran Halpin oh, yeah, well, Dublin it's, story. Well, the, the, no, I it's Gancha, by the way. Chajiva. I'll tell you my Dublin back. story in, re in relation to um, to Kieran. Um, long story short, it's a very long. It, it goes back. Make a chart now, Lucas. Come on. Up. <laughs> well, okay, go on. I'm go joking. On. I'm joking. Um, um, I was involved in a folk club in the north in Groningen called the Plus. Yes. And Kieran would go would go over there twice a year with uh, a madman from Leeds that has been mentioned before tonight called John Strong, a great, fantastic musician. Uh, the both of them, and they would play and they would rip, and we they get yeah. 250 guilders and they would stay the night and they have a great time. And like Sarah said, they were on stage, they were dynamite, and off stage, they were sort of like introvert, nice blokes and stuff. Mm. And 
so I got I invited myself to to see to go and see them in Amsterdam in the Folk Fairport, and we had a couple of mad nights there. Um, it is all a bit hazy, but I believe that in '82 I, I invited myself to stay with Kier. No, I went over to Dublin, and the only well, the only real person I, musician I knew was Kieran, who at this time uh, he was living in Ringsand. And he gave me a safe house or a safe spot in his house, like under the kitchen table, because that was the only safe place you could actually sleep. <laughs> because there were so many people. It's, it's like Houston Station. Yeah. And there's so many people going in and out. It was mad because <laughs> at this time he was in a band uh, called Tipsy Sailor, a fantastic band. And I've been looking everywhere to find the bands, some footage, with because there was Johnny Keenan. The brother of Paddy Keenan, yes, uh, the, the 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 best musician in the family is people. <laughs> Let's say he was mad. He was mad, and there was, of course, there was the late and great Mick the Fitz Gerald, fantastic songwriter from Dublin. Um, yeah, the stories just go on what, and on. What what, and, the, what year was that? Now, did you say? Well, it roughly, it is a bit hazy, but it must yeah. have been eighty-two. It must Easy-ish. have been eighty-two. Yeah. 82-ish, yeah, uh, because the flower was in Listow and uh, the lads were busking in the, on the Listow flower and I was flogging jewellery and I was raking it and making tons of money because uh, we were, I was with this Englishman <laughs> and we, we, we bought crucif. no, he would over, go over to England and buy fake jewellery by the kilo. Mm. And sh- smuggled it into Ireland and the, the 10 cent pence each and we'd sell them for a pound. And boy, if you ever want to make a, mo- a fortune, go out with crucifixes <laughs> outside on a Sunday morning at this in the church. <laughs> Guaranteed. <Yeah. laughs> we, we, ro- we just rolled out of a ditch somewhere and he made 20 20 pounds just like that, you know? Just like Wonderful. that. Wonderful. So, yeah, like but that. the 80s in Ireland, of course, was a, were, the, there were amazing times. I mean, the, 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 the sessions were, yeah, and the pub were. scene and the... It was as far as I can remember them, as far as I can remember, as you can remember them, them yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was back, I was backish in Holland in the early 90s. Um, Kieran was still coming through, like he was, Kieran was like one of these comets, they come round mm-hmm. and you, every <laughs> twice a year or something. And at this day and age, he teamed up with a, a madman called Chris Jones, yes. and he was a fan. Fantastic guitarist. He was a complicated person, mind you, but he was a real and he was really, really a fantastic guitarist. And the way they played together, the way their song, the way it's the same like what what Tom did. What Tom was mentioning, like he, he would get into the words of the song, and the the way Chris would add music to Kieran's music was just incredible and the, the vibes on the on the shows were yeah it was something else it was Sometimes. also quite yeah there was also quite often there was a bit of animosity in the air because there were these two talented musicians and they were so fantastic and they're putting their hearts and souls out to a crowd that was just roaring and shouting and yeah you know, I know what you mean, kind of a pub crowd. Yeah, people people figure that maybe that's where Kieran got that really rocking, beating <laughs> motor motorhead type of playing. But the motorhead way, acoustic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love well, it. He has it. He actually has it on some of his albums, uh, and it's actually something that I tell people when they buy my album. I say, you can only play this. You only you know a band called Motorhead. Well, that's how loud <laughs> you have to play this motherfucker. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> out. really yeah. bait it out. You know that. Yes, yeah, the only way sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But still, under, under all that, there would be the music, and uh, yeah. So I met him through the through the years, on and off, and he was always the same. Wonderful musician, wonderful person. Uh, a bit distant to me, anyway. But yeah, he was grand, it was, and it's Absolutely it's was, strange. Yeah. It's such a strange way to like. I mean, there are certain uh, certainties in life, if that makes any sense. And one of them was that Kieran would always like the comet that I just the mentioned. Comet. He was a satellite. He come yeah, around very, every, very oh, true. Yeah, oh, it's that oh, time of year again. That time of the year again. Yeah, he had this lovely circuit going. He did. He did the song you picked. 
is indeed with, with with the brilliant Chris Jones, and hopefully they're, yes. they're together, jamming together now somewhere. Yeah, um, yeah, oh, they will, they will be. They, they, they will probably fi be, be fighting with the audience about <laughs> yeah. can, can I borrow a fag, you know? But but this I picked this, this, it, I picked song, this yeah. song for I picked this song if I if you, if you do. don't mind for a couple of reasons, and one of them is that the way Chris just tears into the song is incredible. Yeah. And the other thing I find is that the strange, I just can't help but wonder at the strangeness of it all. And I believe that there's another great line back here, and uh, which is in glory days that for all the good you do, you get paid in heaven, for all the bad you pay down here. Lovely. That's a wonderful line. But this line here is I can't, for every songwriter, I just can't help but wonder at the strangeness, the strangeness of, it all. of it all. And at the last time round, it's I just can't help but wonder at the beauty of it all. And that is my good night. And thanks very much for having me. And uh, good luck. It's an absolute pleasure thank talking you. to you and, and for your lovely words. And we'll play a song now. And uh, thank you so, it's, so much for Kieran being here. Song. Yeah, it's Kieran's it's Kieran's song. song. Yes, I know. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's, from your, it's from your heart as well. Good that night, is. Lucas. And thank you so much. Chris right. Jones, folks, and Kieran Happen. I just can't help but wonder at the strangeness, strangeness of it all. Of it all. Six o'clock in the morning, the time between two times. I hear the early songbird, I hear the church bell chime. And I know you're out there somewhere, wrapped in yesterday's old news. Sometimes Simon gives you shelter, sometimes Sherry shares your view. From long distance you wouldn't know me. This is a Dublin local call I cannot help but wonder At the strangeness of it all No, I cannot help but wonder At the strangeness of it all not come easy to these friends who've come to stay nor will dreams be calm and restful on this eve of saint anne's day and no matter where you travel you learn or what you find there's still one elusive element a certain peace of mind then i know you're up there asleep in Waiting for this local call, you cannot help but wonder at the strangeness of it all. No, I cannot help but wonder at the strangeness of it all. In this early morning town I return to find you sleeping And I remember why we're here It's not love that I've been seeking Darling, I find love lying near But there's still a sad uncertainty Will the future make us fall? 
cannot help but wonder at the strangeness of it all. No, I cannot help but wonder at the strangeness of it all. The strangeness of it all. Knowing you're out there somewhere Somewhere You're out there somewhere Hey, 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 hey I know, I know, I know, I know, I know You're out there somewhere Thank you. The mighty Chris Jones there, along with Kieran. Wow! <clears throat> Thanks so much, Lucas, for uh, sending that uh, that track. Well, well done, and, and beautiful words there as well from you. So thanks very much for, for being here tonight, Lucas Stark there from Groningen. Um, I'm going to Oslo, Norway in a moment now for our next guest. Before I do, I would like to play a little something. Uh, as I said earlier, one of my favorite songs of Kieran has always been Sister and Brother, I suppose. Maybe maybe because I I, I, I heard it as a, as a, as a youth from uh, Dolores Kane, but um, my next guest is Steiner Albrechtson, and I want to play a little bit of, of his version of this song for you, just, a, just about a minute of it, just so you know, because it's in Norwegian, sure, who speaks Norwegian? Um, but have a listen to this uh, beautiful version, folks, of uh, Steiner Albrechtson and Monica Norley doing Sister and Brother. Steiner Albrechtson, welcome to the show. How are you doing? 
Well, thank you very much, Dai. I'm, I'm doing pretty good up here in, uh, in Norway. You are indeed. Uh, Norway are, uh, are doing very well in these corona times. Fair play to them. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess uh, so far we, we, we're, you know, we're trying to be careful and wear our masks all the time. But it's, it's a strange situation, you know, and, and it's really sad, you know, but uh, we're just going to have to do what, what, whatever we can, you know. And, and it was nice you started out doing what actually turned out to be our wedding song. You know, indeed, the, the, indeed. Yeah. the woman, the woman in the video, you know her actually. Well, you know her I much know her longer, very than, well. I, longer than, than I, even. I know your yeah, wife I know. longer than you do. That sounds I know. Yeah, yeah, you were writing Move songs on. together. <laughs> but anyway, yes. Yeah, so we married and we used that song instead of, uh, you know, having a speech for each other. We sang that song together in, in the uh, at the wedding. And, and, and then also we put on the album, we put it on an album with the same title, Shelevan, which means actually soulmates. Soulmates, yeah, you can't. No it a bit. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, but and a beautiful, you, you, beautiful song by, by uh, you know, Kieran. So, you know. And you called him up when you recorded that, didn't you? And you spoke to him. Of course, I, I, I did that before, you know, recording mm -hmm. it. And, you know, we, because we were sitting here, uh, to be honest, sipping on some uh, good white wine, and uh, we were just trying to do something with the with the song, you know, and, and it just came really easy for us to, to you know, get some some uh, very romantic lyrics uh, Repoemized in, in in a way, kind of like you know. So uh, uh, everybody likes it, and uh, we we always do it at shows. And of yeah. course, we mentioned Kieran Halpin as the singer songwriter who did it. You know, wonderful. Well, uh, and I, I know he was very very pleased with uh, having a song translated. In Norway. Yeah, well, he really was. Yeah, <laughs> I have a I have a Kieran Halpin story, which is kind of like uh, hilarious in a way. Uh, yes. but um, yes. well, it's actually quite a it's it's a two two sides of the story because the thing is that I was uh, touring with my friend Tom Pacheco who was living in Dublin at the time and this was about 1993 and we were playing at a place called the Whelan's Dublin Did that? yeah, yeah that's so we were playing that the pl Whelan's I think Whelan's, yes, in Wexford Street, yes. And the, pl the place was packed and, and everybody was you know it was uh, you could hear a pin drop it was really quiet and then Tom Pacheco after four or five songs introduced me on stage I came up those you know, narrow, dark stairs, uh, you know, with two guitar cases, one 12-string guitar and, and one six-string guitar. And I tripped on the very last step. <laughs> no. So you can imagine both the guitar cases slamming into the stage. And, uh, you know, the microphone. The microphone stands and the microphones picked up the sound. It was like a bang, the big bang. And the crowd went wild. They thought it was kind of like, you know, that I, that I did it on purpose. I don't know. Please so anyway, me. I... Yeah. Picked up my guitar and I stumbled onto the microphone, sat down on the stool, and I said, "Well, I'll, I do that all the time, folks." <laughs> 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 anyway, so Kieran was in the, in the audience, and and we got to talk afterwards, and uh, it all turned out he had a CD with him, and and uh, me and my uh, fiance back then, you know, uh, we uh, invited him to the hotel room, you know, because I had a little disc man, and I was so anxious to hear the uh, the songs, you know. Yeah. And I had a little, you know, a little loudspeaker, as we do when we the troubadours go on tour. We always have a something that we can uh, listen to in, in the hotel room. Yeah. So back then it was CD, it was a disc player, and and anyway, uh, he he put on the put on the the disc, and I was blown away because it was the CD uh, Mission Street. Yeah. Uh, which starts out with the song Refugee from Heaven. And I uh, actually turned out to use that song as the opening song for my next tour. But that's a different story because, uh, you know, we just got a hold of some really good whiskey called the Isle of Jura. They don't oh, make that yeah. many... They don't make that many bottles in the year. Uh, and it, it was, you know, it was just my kind, single malt. And, and we were sitting there sipping to that whiskey, talking, and, and uh, you know, listening to that beautiful music. Uh, and, of course, Davy Spillen on the Yulon Pipes. Uh, oh, man. I mean, it was a great, uh, the great sound of, and a great production. And we were actually on the same uh, label at the time, which was called called Round Tower yeah. label. So anyway, we were drinking, and he was sitting on, on, right on the uh, on the edge of the the bed. And, and then suddenly, I remember he had one knee over the other knee, and it was just as he was going to take a sip, he just flipped over backwards. Oh no! <laughs> and it was all quiet for about a. Uh, maybe 10 seconds, and then he, you could see Kieran crawling 
up uh, over the bed. <laughs> he saw his head, and I think he said, "Well, I think I better go home now." <laughs> you know, <laughs> but um, it was such, it was hilarious, and, and yeah, we weren't drunk; right. we were just so happy. Anyway, yeah, that's, uh, that's actually the last time I saw him. This is years ago. Yeah, so, wow, but I always story. loved his music, and and uh, you know, uh, he played in Norway at the Scotchman uh, for a, a year, I think. And, and I know that you've been playing in those Irish pubs in different yeah, countries, and and he was so happen. he was so sick and tired of that song, "Whiskey in the Jar." <laughs> yeah, are you doing the pub thing? Yes, yeah, we all we all have to go through that. I know there's a place called Dubliners in in Oslo where you've been playing a lot, the and Dubliners you know, and, right, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, we anyway, been... so so he was he was a great guy. He was such a humble person. I wish he wasn't that humble. That he had a you're, little you're more elbows. A bit too humble. Yeah, mm. I think it was too humble. He could have he could have uh, done much more with his career. But of course, it's hard. Uh, and uh, and I think he was uh, a lonely soul in a way. Uh, when I met him, he just broke up. So I guess he wrote a lot of good songs, uh, you know, because of that situation. Yeah. That's what we do, you know. That's what we do, so, yeah. Well, I'm really uh, delighted that you could share the, the, those stories with us, uh, Steiner, and uh, delighted I could play a little bit of your uh, of your translated song there for, for the people tonight. That was nice, yeah. But, but, uh, mm. but that song, you know, I, I actually I, I used a 12-string guitar on that opening song because I had a very, very good uh, saxophone player who also plays uh, soprano saxophone on my tour which followed when i had that album so when i did that last that next tour i i had a big really good band and of course it started with refugee from heaven and i think actually the second song was a song by a scottish uh, gentleman he, uh, his name was jerry rafferty and yeah, that song was memory. uh that was baker street because that also has a beautiful saxophone uh, tone, you know, in it. Yeah, so, you were a yeah. Thing, you were blown away by the by by David. I, well, I was playing on I this was. as well. Uh, it was so nice to be on your show, Di, and and I really hope all the best for you and and all your listeners and the people following you that they they uh, you know stay safe, keep your masks on, <laughs> and <laughs> don't get don't get that virus. No, we want you to uh, look after each other. Lots yeah, of love that's to what Monica we do. Up there uh, as well. I know she's there. She's always close by. Uh, give her, give her my love anyway. <laughs> Thank you she very is. much for 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 being on the show, Steiner Robertson. And Thank look forward to seeing you in real life down the road. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And here is uh, Kieran <laughs> from the album Mission Street Refugee from Heaven. Good choice of song. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank you. Are you a refugee from heaven? Are you 
you a hot slur out of hell? Are you an angel or a devil? Or is it possible to tell? But it's only one night. Hold on, hold on. It's only one night. Shout about it. You want the whole world to approve. In the game, you cheat quite openly. You always get an extra move. When you're free, you need in company. In the crowd, you stand alone. And when I meet you in the Irish bar. All we ever talk about is home. Are you a refugee from heaven? Are you a hustler out of hell? Are you an angel or a devil? Or is it possible to tell? But it's only one life. Oh, Mission Street, Refugee from Heaven. What a great track. And the brilliant Davy Spillan there taking it out. Steiner Robertson in Oslo, thank you so much for uh, sharing those stories with us tonight and for being here on uh, this little tribute show with Kieran Halpin. Time is flying, lads. Jeez, we're an hour and a half into it already. I've got three more guests, and then we're going to call it a night. So if you stuck with us from the beginning, fair play to you. And Facebook haven't kicked us off yet either. Brilliant. I can't believe it. So some of you are watching on, on, on uh, Facebook, some of you on YouTube, most of you on YouTube. Thank you very much. Please hit that subscribe button if you are on YouTube. It helps me to grow this channel, folks, and, and get the word out there. Uh, it is a channel dedicated to singer-songwriters. It's not my YouTube channel, but it's I, I run it, just in case you're wondering. Um, so look, we uh, I'm going to go to Dublin. Uh, uh, why not? The power of technology allows. Let's go over and talk to the brilliant... Paul Lee, are you there, sir? Good evening. You may have your mic muted. Um, oh, there you are. Unmute yourself, Vic, and talk to us. How are you? Nice to see you, Dahi. How are you? I'm, I'm very well. It's been a real pleasure to listen to those people picking those songs. And, um, Hasn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. And, and you just realize again how many bloody songs he has. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Incredible. I could be here for another for another four hours easily, but I said yeah. I better call a halt soon because uh, he he has such a such a brilliant repertoire. For people who oh, don't great. know you, Paul, 
he had an incredible re repertoire and, and a huge amount of a uh, huge body of work behind him. For people who don't know you, Paul, you're, you're, you've been a, one of the main booking agents, in, in, mainly in the Dublin scene, am I right, over, over many years. Just uh, tell us a little bit about your background and sort of the venues you were involved with, please, just for our listeners who may not know you. Well, I would have met Kieran probably in, in 1987 or 88 for the first time. I just came back from England and I was involved in theatre and I got involved in on Bale Booked pub in Charlemont Street, run by the mad Mick Leeson. <laughs> and uh, it was a great pub. It was a great music pub at the time. Uh, Kieran would have been a big feature there at the time and he would have been playing you know, Scullion and, and Freddie White and Sean Tyrrell and uh, God knows, you know, all the singers, Mick Hanley and all those singers yeah. all in and out of the place. Wonderful. And um, that's where I would have come across them first. And yeah, I was there for uh, up to it closed. And then I ended up opening up a place in the cobblestone upstairs in the cobblestone and running it as a music venue. My, my plan was to run it as a theater venue, but I'd, I'd ended up getting caught, dragged into this fucking music business. And, <laughs> uh, so I ended up booking Kieran into the cobblestone. So I, over the last 30 years, I'd say I've booked Kieran at a wild guess about 20 times, you know, in different venues, you know, over over the last 30 oh, years. You've been involved in at least half a dozen then venues, at least, I'd say. In yeah, you, you know, Mother Red Caps and the Cherry Tree and... Uh, yeah. All the big name ones, yeah. On, on you even booked me once or twice, yeah. I did, <laughs> did yeah. I? yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think I opened for Mick Hanley or something. I can't remember. There's a couple yeah. of other gigs I remember. I remember, um, and it might have been in the Cobblestone as well. But yeah, they, they, of course, the scene changed a lot. And over the year, you would have seen a lot of change in the music business. Uh, well, uh, I mean, what was, over the years, at, of course. what was happening at that time, like the bail booked, and after that, into the Cobblestone years, into the 90s. Yeah. The the folk scene was hopping. It was absolutely buzzing. I mean, Kieran was, Kieran could get, you know, he'd get a good crowd just solo. You know, he'd yeah. get a good crowd. And then it kind of died off for him after that, uh, into the nineties. You know, and um, he struggled over all the years that I did gigs with him. He really struggled in Ireland. You know, with the odd exception, Martin Alcock did a tour with him couple of times i think and you know we might have had 60 people or 70 people at one or two of those gigs yes um but generally poor old kieran struggled with, with his irish oh, audio. He'd, he'd a very yeah. fan base but it, it you know it, it made things tough you know it, it did and i just we mentioned in an in a earlier conversation that you know the <clears throat> Kieran's kind of mentality, I think, was look. It doesn't matter if there's five at the gig or five hundred. I want, I want to be gigging. I want to be working. I, I always found that about him. You, you did too, I think. You mentioned oh, yeah, that a little earlier. Yeah, he was mad. He was mad for work. I mean, he was mad yeah. for gigging, and uh, he'd give exactly what he'd give to five as he would to fifty. I mean, he, he. I mo most of the arguments I ever had with Kieran was about the sound. <laughs> Yeah, and the loudness, yeah, the loudness the sound level. He, he yeah, this little club, and and I sometimes I used to think he's after been playing in too many pubs in Holland and <laughs> with football and talking. He yeah. would really fucking lash it out. Yeah. You know, he, he would, he'd lash it out. Full yeah. on, you know. He was and full on sometimes. Yeah, I'd be trying to get him to uh, chill, chill it down. Chill, chill, and chill, one, of the, yeah. one, of the, one of the wonderful things that used to happen, especially uh, concerts that I remember, Martin Alcock and him. Martin was a lovely, big, lazy, laid-back um, yeah. bass player. You know, he could play other instruments, but he, he played a lot of bass with Kieran. And he was just such a gentle, lovely, laid-back character that it rubbed off on Kieran. And the gig, <laughs> those kind of gigs, where Kieran came down a couple of notches, you know, in his in his well, kind of relaxed a bit. Yeah, yeah, he just kind of chilled out a bit and and. It, they were great. I loved those concerts. You know, sometimes I found he was, you know, on his own. He was fighting the world. You know, he was, you know, he was fighting. He was, he, he felt he was in a fight. You know. Yeah, and, uh, I think as you said earlier, sometimes I think when we come out of this, um, 
if we spend a lot of time in the in the bar scene as well, we tend to have this aggression about us. I've done it myself, you know. Where yeah. You, you, you might, you, you know, Kieran was Kieran never turned down gigs, and, and he could be in a in a noisy ish uh, Irish bar one night, and then suddenly finding himself in a in a, a pin yeah, drop sort of room. venue, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, literally, you know, from night to night, and that's how he worked. So. Uh, sometimes, yeah, I can imagine he went in and kind of forgot himself, forgot where he was in a way. I've done it myself where you kind of go, okay, let's go, you know, and then you realize, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm, in, yeah. I'm in somewhere a little quieter. Um, yeah. Sometimes he could take the head off the audience. <laughs> no, could he? Yeah, he was, yeah, but I said he never, yeah. yeah, he didn't shy away from uh, telling people to shut up if, 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 then if you to. listen to those songs tonight, some of them that played, Sarah played, and, and one or two others that were played, just gorgeous, gorgeous. emotional soft songs that he could do you know but he, he, he it was a hard old road he had i think i think you know especially in latter years i think he was i, I don't know about how he was doing in europe really but uh when he came to ireland i nearly always did a gig with him here and and uh it was a struggle for him to struggle get, to get people here. in yeah i don't know if that's, yeah. that's that could be just an irish thing too i, I don't know you, you you you'd know more than, than i would i mean do irish audiences appreciate music as much as the european ones i don't know if they do maybe because we're oversaturated with it i don't know if that's the case but yeah. how do you feel about it do you think that's i mean in the right ballpark or am i way out I there don't I, mean, I don't know <laughs> i find there's a great i find there's a great love of what we do as songwriters out here belgium holland germany a great respect for it you know even in even when i found when you walk into a kind of a bar or prat cafe as they call them over here the volume tends to drop and people are going, oh, there's a singer-songwriter, let's have a bit of respect, you know. I found that, and that's kind of what kept me here as well, um, maybe Kieran too. Maybe it's just an Irish thing, you know, people are out for the crack and they, they, you know, they want to chat and they want to, you know, and then getting them to attend gigs is, is I found it tough, tough uh, yeah, as well, it, in my uh, own experience. It's not exceptional to Kieran by any means. <laughs> there's I don't think so, so yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, there are other people who struggle too. Yeah, small you know. pond. it's a small pond here, and to try I, and hold, get it. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. You were looking for a song, but you couldn't find on the tube, and I and I forced a, a, another great song a friend, uh, that I love called "All the Answers on You." If that's okay to play, what was the album you mentioned that you were trying to find? It was um, solo, was it? Solo, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that, I, that, I, that. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I think that Martin Alcock tour that he did and he did it played in the cobblestone i think that was the album solo i didn't i meant to check it up but i think it was and um okay and it's like some of the stuff you know with chris playing on his beside him it really fills in the gaps and and brings the whole thing to life in a, in a very special way when he had when he had some of those great people with him you know yes it's great credit to him that those people played with him because you know th th those people weren't nobody's <laughs> that's right no no he had he had a great he had a great a great great uh, team with them always did he um yeah. I, i'm gonna load up the song here as, as we're chatting i i i, I kind of take it upon myself to play this beautiful song which a lot of people love which is called uh all the answers and this is the song that uh there's a dutch woman uh, called ilsa de lange had a, had a big hit with out here um in europe um so if it's okay with you i'll give that a, a blast um Paul and, and thank you so much for coming on and uh, hanging around for a long time there in the back in the background waiting to come on uh, to give us uh, your your lovely words about Kieran and uh, yeah. it's great thank you for doing it and uh, I, I'm sad sad and and happy that we got together and had a chat so yeah me too you. me too and thank you for being here Paul I know he uh, he he you gave him a lot of work over the years and I I know he was grateful for that and. Uh, yeah. You know, many, of, many of us. You never got an awful lot of money. But <laughs> <laughs> no, those bloody booking agents tend to skim out. I never made a sausage out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, uh, as long as we I made know, a few I bob out of you, I'm, Paul, that's I'm, I'm loved him for his passion and, and, for yeah. his, and his poetic lyrics. Fair play to him. Thanks a million be for missed. your time and your words, Paul. And uh, look after yourself. Stay safe in that lockdown over there. And good night, Rion Boherlat. Same to you. Slán, Paul, thanks for being here. Let's give this song a, a blast, folks. I know it's a, a favourite of a lot of you. Um, Loftus Open Acoustic, uh, the Station Hotel, wherever that may be. But whoever made this video, thank you for it. <laughs> i 
gonna call you in the morning Tell you everything's alright I can't see into the future I don't see a danger in the night But when I hear the siren wail I see the flashing of the light I know that there is trouble There's a battle yet to fight I may not have all the answers, no I wouldn't have it any other way I may not have all the answers, no I wouldn't have it any other way There's an inner peace I'm seeking There's a lightness in my soul Every time I think about it I want to touch it, feel it whole And the day that I stop asking Will be the day I say goodbye The world may not be safe But there's no truth without the lie I may not have all the answers, no I wouldn't have it any other way I may not have all the answers, no I wouldn't have it any other way Well, I've asked the good Lord Jesus I'm asking Allah too I've tried the great Lord, but Now I'm asking you I may not have all the answers, no I wouldn't have it any other way I may not have all the answers, no I wouldn't have it any other way When you're deep in trouble, water You gotta fight for every breath You feel you're getting weaker You're chasing life, you're facing death If there's a God that you can turn to, don't turn the other way. Or a friend that you can call on, just a prayer that you can say. I may not have all the answers, no, I wouldn't have it any other way. I may not have all the answers, no, I wouldn't have it any other way. Wonderful. What a great song. It's no wonder Ilse de Lange uh, recorded it. Absolutely stunning. Um, all the answers. And thanks very much to Paul Lee there, of course. Uh, booking uh, booking man extraordinaire. Booking agent is the word for extraordinaire. Lovely man uh, over in Dublin for his kind words there about Kieran. Now, um, we're going over to Scotland. And, uh, <laughs> well, almost. I should, warn, I should warn the viewers now at this point. That we might need subtitles. <laughs> have, we, have you subtitles, Roy? <laughs> My budget won't stretch to subtitles, I'm afraid, on, on this channel. But uh, Roy Gillain from the Tannehill Weavers, how are you doing, sir? And welcome. I'm doing very well. Great to Despite have you on board. it all, I'm doing rather well. Yeah, it's good. You are, yeah. Of course, all yep. your gigs gone and all the lockdown stuff and all them. Yeah, yeah. Well, did you did you lose a lot in, of Tannehill gigs? Sorry to interrupt. We moved them all to next year. Okay, great. That's what we're kind of doing. When yeah. a tour gets cancelled, we just move it lock, stock, and barrel into next year. And we, of course, we just need to wait and see if we're going to have to do that again. I know. And uh, before we talk about Kieran, you, you you mentioned that you were going to start doing a bit of home recording, making some videos. Tell us a little bit about, a bit about that project. Yeah, in the absence of anything else, I, I kind of scratched my head about what am I going to do 
Um, <laughs> and I decided I'd like to kind of do a, I'm calling it a jukebox. And uh, one of the things I've been doing, uh, I thought I've got to do something. And I yeah. thought I'll learn to ski, but I couldn't <laughs> find a hill. <laughs> Um, yeah, I should. We should let people know. You're not actually in Scotland. You're in. No, you're in Groningen. In the, you're not. Yeah, another Groninger. Another Groninger. Um, yeah. <laughs> North Holland hills are hard to find. Yeah, ha, very hard to find. <laughs> so what I started doing was I went. I've written loads of songs over the years, and I started going through them all, and I went, "That's not bad. That's not bad. That's absolute crap. That's not bad." <laughs> That's total crap. What was I thinking? <laughs> but anyway, long story short, I, I, I ended up with a whole bunch of songs that I thought, well, they're, they're worth letting people hear. So I'm, I'm uh, kind of recording them uh, on video yeah. and I'm going to start this thing, Roy's Jukebox, and the, the kind of hope is that people will pay a pound or a euro or a dollar per play and, mm. uh, and listen to my songs. Roy's, Roy's jukebox. Okay, Roy's jukebox, I, I, I'd yeah. pay a quid. I'd pay a quid to hear one of your songs. Okay, <laughs> only one. <laughs> only, only one, right? Uh, it's, no, just, it's a start. That's you got to start somewhere. Yeah, you start somewhere. I'll Talk just to me about myself up here. There yeah, we go. Oh, there, line yourself up. Talk to me about the brilliant Karen Happen. Well, what can you say, uh, Karen? The Tannehills were kind of products of the same era. And over the years, we we all became like road warriors, and Kieran was the ultimate road warrior. Yes, uh, he, I remember he showed me a, a, a tour. I mean, he did everything himself, as far as I, I, yeah, I know. He I think set so. up all the tours, and he showed me this tour, and it was like sixty days long. And he had like yeah. it ended. I remember on the thirtieth of November. After like sixty straight nights, sixty, <laughs> and on the first of December, it just said Z Z Z Z Z Z Z. Don't come near me for it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's getting into hibernation. Oh my god. Yeah, he was a hard worker. He was he, a hard he, worker. Gosh, my god. He was yeah, hard and you worker. know, it breaks my heart that the guy was so prolific, and it's such an excellent songwriter mm -hmm. and in the big scheme of things it, you know he's, he's going to be an unsung hero and that absolutely upsets me because I yeah. switch my radio on and I hear songs they're in the hit parade yeah. and they're not in the same league as, as Kieran's songs. No not at all I, I don't know if he'll be an unsung hero well he certainly won't be an unsung hero in the big scheme of things. In the big scheme of things I'm just saying yeah, yeah. People who know songs and the people who know uh, what good songwriting is, you know, we, we, we know. And uh, his songs will, will, will live on, as you know. For, you know well, that, for... that is a lovely thing about yeah. if you die nowadays in a way you don't. Yeah, when you're, when you're in this and game, it's, it's very true. Yeah, right? yeah. And especially for musicians, uh, songwriters, the, the, their music will be there forever. And... As long as people are, are, are listening to Kieran's songs, Kieran yeah. will still be around. And he's still there to be seen in YouTube and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. So it's, <laughs> at this expense of maybe sounding a little ridiculous, there's never been a better time to die. <laughs> That's quite true. <laughs> They're going to do it now. It's time. And, you know, we were talking talking to, to, to Chris Link earlier on as well about the, the elections tomorrow and... You know, if Trump does it again, I'm, I'm glad he's not around to see it. You know that because he, yeah. you know, he, he was very. Oh man, he he had a great, uh, he had some great, he had some great songs, but he also had this um, this thing. He we he, he always texts me funny stuff about Trump and about that, what was going on in the states. You know, um, politically minded, of course, but he, you know, clever man, clever yeah. man, and, and and he had his finger on the pulse politically and in, in every way. Um, uh, but yeah, gonna be sadly missed. Did you do you remember meeting him for the first time, uh, Roy? Oh, I, you know, I can't isolate the first time I met him. It, it's like one of these guys that's always been there. Yeah, yeah. you know what True. I mean. And, and you would meet him. He'd come to your gig, or or you would say, "Oh, yeah. hey, Kieran's playing in town." Like we'd go to his gig, and yeah, he'd show up. We'd meet him. In, well, I don't think I've ever met him in an airport, but you know, you you. 
do festivals yeah. together and all that kind of thing. And and it was there was all kind of there, we met them often enough to have a a, a, a lot of kind of personal private jokes between us and things that would jokes yeah. that would go on and on and on for <laughs> for years. You know, you would, we 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 would often uh, leave uh, mail for each other. At, at gigs, if you saw little you know, notes and stuff, yeah, little notes, and, <laughs> and now and again there'd be an envelope with money in it to get yourself a drink. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, more often than not, it would be tea bags. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do with these? <laughs> yeah, no, he'd, he'd put tea bags in an envelope for the Tannehill Weavers. Get yourself, <laughs> <a drink. laughs> get yourself a drink, lads. <laughs> <laughs> and so, of course, we would we do the same right. to him. And it was all these kind of little that jokes kind of that would go on and on and on for years. It was unbelievable. Ah, that's it's beautiful. The camaraderie was great. I suppose you would have played several festivals and, and, and gigs, did you, over the years? Yeah, the last you one we did across. Yeah, we actually was uh, here in the area, uh, uh, out at uh, the one at Villam. You were talking to Villam earlier. He, he used to yeah. run this place. Uh, Oh my goodness! Just in a Dutch German border, and they they would have a, a festival. Uh, and that was that was the uh, via. One. Oh no, I'm, 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 the Rapalia via Rapalia. This festival. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And that was the last time that we uh, we played together with, with Kieran. But we you know we've uh, woken up under <laughs> tables. <laughs> 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 since, since since then, but uh, I know that was the last time we actually played together. Was was up here in the north of Holland. Yeah. It'll be sadly missed. It'll be sadly missed. Um, as you said, Roy, um, by a lot of yeah. us. No, it was amazing. Yeah. To, you know what Lucas was saying earlier. Mm. He, he, he was he was like the satellite. <laughs> like the satellite going around the, the comet. Right. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll be going to see Kieran at some point this month. He must be somewhere around. <laughs> he must be somewhere. You could like th yeah, throw a stone at a uh, yeah at a town. He'd probably be be, be be playing. It's very true. Yeah, he he'll be he, he was a, a hard worker and a, a wonderful songwriter. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing your uh, your your jukebox sessions uh, coming up as well. But maybe we'll have a chat about that in, in a separate interview down the road, if you'd like, yeah, Roy. It'd be, it'd be great. That would be great. Yeah. What um what song did you pick from from Kieran to play? Hey, I picked the wind that rocks my cradle. And you did indeed. I picked it because it was very hard to choose a favourite when you asked me to choose a favourite no, I couldn't really narrow it down to one but what swung this one uh, for me was the fact that I, it was one that I if you know we'd be sitting having a session at the end of a, uh, a festival or something I would say going to sing that song going to sing my favourite the one about Mexico <laughs> <laughs> who's the one about Mexico <laughs> the one that one you wrote about Mexico <laughs> And he would always do it for me. So yeah, it's a beautiful for song. that reason. That more than anything else, I think that's that made it my favourite song. Akira's. Yeah, it's it's certainly one of my tops as well. I want to give a shout out. This is you're the penultimate uh, guest. We have a, a man called Christoph uh, Schellhorn from Austria who's going to come on after you. Christoph uh, was a great friend of Kieran's. Christoph made a series called The Looking Back Sessions. Um, right, yes, you've yes. probably seen those. So he's, yeah. he's our next guest, uh, our, our final guest. Um, and so the song uh, is from The Looking Back Sessions, um, um, The Wind That Rocks My Cradle. And a, is a, a song. nice segue on your, your yeah, part, that's a little segue. segue. See, I'm a yeah. professional broadcaster now, you see, right? <laughs> I'm trying to learn these things. Segue. There's more to you than me to see. I tell you, boy, <laughs> <laughs> there's less as well. But look, I want to thank you so very, very much, uh, for, for talking to us tonight, Roy. Um, we, we'll have a we'll have a conversation down the road again, uh, when you're when these videos of yours are up and running and you have your songs out. And we'll talk about that project on the old raving with Rua. Let's do it. Why Brilliant. Not? Thanks a lot. Thanks for being here. Look after yourself and, and stay you safe too. and well. Everybody, keep your heads under the parapet and uh, slanche wa, slanche wa, have I? Slanche wa. All the best, I slanche. Slanche. But yeah, folks, the, the wonderful Kieran Halpin from uh, the Looking Back concerts uh, made by Christoph Schellhorn, which we'll talk to in a, in a few. Who we'll talk to in a few seconds? Let's have this great song.
cradle. Um, the title comes from uh, the cradle in this case uh, was a Mercedes bus I had at the time that I was sleeping in. Uh, the wind in question is the wind that brings the Gulf Stream from the Gulf of Mexico and gives us what we call in Ireland a soft climate, which basically means it rains and then it rains a little bit more. And then it rains a little bit more. Um, it was a time uh, I went to Galway to get away from it all. Uh, actually, I was probably trying to get away from myself, which has never worked yet. This is the wind that rocks my cradle. Blows all the 
away from Mexico. By the Spanish arch, with a Belfast point of view, and I awoke beside a stranger in a song, a song I thought I knew, and all the dreams that I. Like the first time I heard stereo, and the wind that rocks my cradle blows all the way from Mexico, blows all the way from Mexico. Blows all the way from Mexico. Yeah. Blows all the way from Mexico. Blows all the way from Mexico. From Mexico. All the way from Mexico. Darling, all the way from Mexico. To go away from Mexico. The wind that rocks my cradle. Great choice there from Roy Galan. And thank you, Roy, for being with us tonight, all the way from Scotland-ish. Um, lovely that you uh, picked that song. It's absolutely wonderful. And also from the Looking Back sessions, uh, produced there by Christoph Schillhorn, who is uh, the last guest tonight. And um, very, very happy that he could be here with us. Um, so let's bring him on the stream. All going to plan. Are you there, Christoph? I'm here. Hello there. Hi. Hi thanks, to everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, last thanks but not least, I thought, I thought, you know, we started with Tom McConville there, the man who sort of began Kieran's touring career and why not finish with a man who was probably one of the last people to to tour with them? You 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 had a great friendship with Kieran and a great professional yeah. uh, friendship or career uh, with with Kieran. Tell us a little bit about that. Where you where you met him for the first time and how you ended up playing guitar with him? Um, well, first of all, um, hi from Austria. As you can see, uh, I have turned my kitchen into a green room. <laughs> you have <laughs> color of hope. So um, yeah. Um, Thanks for doing this, uh, much appreciated. And when did I meet Kieran for the first time? 2001, it must have been, um, in an Irish pub in Austria, in Innsbruck, Tirol, where I'm from. Yeah. And it was really, you could call it just by chance or fate, who knows? Because we would go out you know, in Kufstein, which is really where I'm from, and uh, to our, you know, uh, local pub regularly. Mm. Uh, someone at some point just said, let's go to Innsbruck. Let's drive to Innsbruck. It's a 14 minutes drive. And, and we said, well, that's not what we usually do, but let's do it, you know. And we got in the car and everybody was wondering where to go in Innsbruck. And I was the only one in the car who knew where to go. Yeah. And I said, I know this place, nice venue called the Limerick Bills. They have live music and stuff. And, and good Irish beer. And uh, we got there and there was a poster on the wall said, uh, the Glory Days Revisited Tour, uh, Kieran Halpin and Chris Jones. And I knew Chris from records, Stockfish Records. Hmm. He played on uh, and uh, I thought there must be another Chris Jones 
Who's yeah, playing? <laughs> because what would the great Chris Jones do here? Can't be him. <laughs> yes. So uh, by the time I, I we got to the stage, um, I realized uh, it was him. And uh, beside him was a, a guy called Kieran Halpin, uh, shouting out loud and treating his guitar the way he did. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, you know, all my friends just went upstairs to the room upstairs because they saw in my eyes that uh, they could forget me now. <laughs> <I would. laughs> I'm away. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, see you in one hour. You know. And I got myself a pint of Guinness and, and, and listened to these two guys and I was completely blown away um, from the first second. And then of course we, uh, you know, talked to each other after the gig and I became friends with Chris um, he, who used to, who lived in Tirol for almost one year. Oh, did he? Oh. Uh, yeah, this is, I, I'd like to keep that private. <laughs> <laughs> <Good. laughs> um, he fell in love with my uh, girlfriend and things turned. No, really? Bit. That's wow. That's a big. <laughs> okay, that's now we're get, right. now we're getting into it. Now that's here we go. Right. That's, wow. That's seriously. That's so that's how that it happened. So and then yeah. Kieran told me that night we we met in in Innsbruck. He told me hmm. that he returned to this pub with another guy called uh, Paul Tiernan, a uh, wonderful musician, and and uh, we got there. Uh, a friend of mine and myself, and uh, I gave him a CD. Uh, it was my first album which came out in 2003 with a duo partner. And I said, well, would you like to listen to it and maybe consider booking us for an opening act or support yes. act sometime? Um, and then there were, for three weeks, uh, no message at all. And, and I thought, well, he <laughs> probably didn't like it. <laughs> and then he, he emailed me. Uh, and told me that he uh, didn't have a CD player in his Volvo car, okay. and and which is the reason why he didn't respond. So uh, he he wrote to me an email saying, "Are you free on October eighteenth? Uh, it was two thousand and three uh, to open up for us in a place called uh, Schusterhäusel, the Cobblers Pub in Germering. It was a huge venue, but they had a an Irish pub thing uh, downstairs." Yeah. And that was um, our first ever gig in Germany. So uh, that's how it happened. You ended up yeah, jamming. It, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you recorded a duet with him on your on your album, Holiday Heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will remember love. Yeah. Another fabulous yeah. song. Um, yeah. Were you were you singing that anyway before you met Kieran, like as a cover, or did you learn it from Kieran, or how did that happen? Uh, we did it sometimes as a duo at his shows and at the very last song. And and I chose it for him to be, I, I wanted to help him out a bit, to lift him up a bit because he, when when I uh, produced the album, it was 2019, mm. um, uh, he was in a very bad, a bad place. Yeah, yeah. In, in his head and heart and, and I, tried to lift him up and gave him a call and said, would you, would you like to uh, contribute one of your songs and, and come to the studio and, and we record it together? And he said, yeah. And I wanted to give him something to work on and, and a project Very because nice. we, we always, you know, geeked together with, with Chris Jones a lot and then with Anth Cayley and with Jimmy Smith and with Yogi Yokush, uh, phenomenal, uh, phenomenal musicians, yeah. player from Germany. Mm. Don't know if he's watching. Hi, Yogi. Love Hi, you. Yogi. <laughs> and, um, yeah. With all these guys, you know, all these years, many gigs, many miles, many stories, many stages. And and then, you know, things turned a bit down for him and, and, and he felt down, yeah, often. And we recorded it together and, and he suggested that I would sing the first verse and then he would come in. Mm. And, and, um, the joke was... Um, because he could have been my father, you know, uh, age-wise. He always t told people that I was his <laughs> young, youngest, oldest friend. And yeah, um, yeah, we did it that way. Uh, I sang the first verse, and then within seconds, I uh, aged for 30 years, and, <laughs> and then he came in. And it was a great, great work. Uh, Great to work. Yeah, great to work. Yeah, we will. We will be. <clears throat> we will play that song in a moment. We have. You have a live version of it. Where was the live version filmed? Um, 
this was filmed by um, a friend of mine called Markus Dörfler. He's a photographer uh, in a venue in Wiener Neustadt, which is where I live now. Um, yeah. Here in Wiener Neustadt. Yeah. In Austria. And tell us about the Looking Back sessions as well. Uh, also, uh, three wonderful um, YouTubes that you made for Kieran. Was that again to give him a project to, to get his kind of teeth stuck into, or how did that come about? Exactly, exactly that. So uh, it was lockdown time in March uh, here in Austria and also in Germany, which is where he lived. And yeah, I just wanted to um, share some, some, some stuff with him online so that he could maybe reach people and, and uh, be able to, to uh, put out uh, songs, video form. And he, he saw one of my videos I did in, in that particular time the couch Corona sessions videos mm. I did for myself. And he was like, could you do something for me like this? And I said, yeah, sure, send me some. And and he sent it a test video, which was only 10 seconds long. And it was a still, it was like a still picture of a couch with a cat on it. <laughs> and nothing's moving, you know? And it yeah. was just a test. And I said, well, Kieran, um, <laughs> I was expecting you singing a song. So, uh, just a test. And uh, that's the way he was, you know? And then he sent, you know, songs and uh, sent 33 of them with 33 intros. Yeah. And we decided to glue that together, which I did for him, um, and put out three online concerts, which are still online on YouTube. They are indeed um, beautiful. We had we had a song from, uh, we had the, the last song came yeah. from, from, from uh, was it session one or something? I can't remember. Um, part one, yeah. Part it's, one, yeah. What nice. I love about it. The, the the thing in Innsbruck was um, the where I met him first. They mm. sang that particular song when I met him first. Chris played along, and it was that song. That was the song, really. That's yeah. so smart. So the segue really worked, Roy. Yeah, I yeah. didn't know any of that. You know, I was. Uh, that's great. So we got we got yeah, <laughs> we got the double segue. Yeah, you were you were um you, you I know you were very close to him. In fact, in fact, you weren't going to do this stream tonight because. Uh, when I asked you, of course, when I asked everybody to do this, it was it was still very raw and real. And you said, oh, I don't think I can do it. And mm. that was fine. And you wrote a beautiful piece instead. And you were, I was going to read that out. And so that's why I'm so happy you're, you're, you're here talking because you were very close to him. And, you know, you, you knew his good sides and his bad sides. You were on the road with him side by side, uh, shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. Um, and this is why I'm very happy that you're that you came on to talk to us a little bit about him and Sorry no. for saying no in the first place. Um, no, um, not why. I'm really, I'm really glad I'm, I, I'm with you all uh, tonight. Yeah, we are too. We are too. Yeah. I mean, I could have, as I said, uh, the stream. You know, we're already two hours in, and if you stayed with us, lads, we still have over a hundred viewers on this so far, and people yeah. are so, which is a real testament to Kieran and his work and, and the power mm -hmm. of Kieran helping. Yeah, you it's know, beautiful. the most, the most viewers I've ever had on the live stream ever. I think. Oh, um, great. And uh, that's because of Kieran Halpin and because you guys come on here to, to talk about his uh, songs and his, his, his life. Yeah, it's, um, just, it's, it's amazing to hear all these stories also from the other guests beforehand. It's, yeah. I like to say thank you to everyone. And it's just, you know, these little things that, that matter because Kieran would often be like, um, he knew where I would be in a town. And, and it was one time in Bamberg, I was celebrating my birthday after my gig there. And he knew that and, and texted me. I was in the beer garden, of course, in Bamberg, mm -hmm. you have to go to the beer garden. And he texted me, you know, um, where are you? Which is what we always did. We always did. <laughs> and wo bist du Mensch? He said. <laughs> said, where are you? And I said, I'm in Bamberg. And he texted back, no, where are you exactly? And I said, I'm at the beer garden at my hotel. And five minutes later, he would show up, you know. <laughs> wow, there he was. Surprised me. And that's what he did often, you know. Great man, he was a great man. He'll be, he'll be missed. I know you'll miss him greatly yeah. too, um, as we all oh, we will. All do. We all do, yeah. Uh, as we all will. I'm going to play this song, uh, Christoph, um, and and dear listeners who stayed with us for for two hours. Um, thank you for being here and for sharing your 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 great words with us. Um, I'm going to play the song. I'm going to come back, and then I have yeah, indeed. Skol, wo bist du? Where are you exactly? Right there. Yeah. <laughs>
Just launch it. Uh, so I'm going to play the song. I'm going to come back, and then I have my own little little uh, video tribute uh, at the very end, which we'll All finish right. off with. So let's have this song, the wonderful Kieran Happen song, I Will Remember Love, and we'll remember him and your uh, guesting on this song, Christoph, and a wonderful, a wonderful performance. So let's have it, and let's see Thank it you. in a few minutes, folks. <laughs>
water on your streets. And the friend you never need. And the nightmare in your sleep. Beautiful, Christoph Shellhorn. Uh, absolute wonderful playing. Um, yeah, I know uh, you were, you know, you were his right hand man for a long time. Thank you so so much for coming on there and, and talking to us. This has been uh, probably the, the the most enjoyable two and a half hours I ever spent on a computer. Uh, absolutely stunning uh, tonight to have so many great people coming in, uh, so many great comments from people all over the world. Um, I know you'll you'll miss him as 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 much as I will. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna play a little a little video tribute. Some of you sent in some of you sent in some lovely photographs of, of Chris. Some of them I, I robbed from the internet, and some of you uh, sent me photographs to, for this last little piece um, that I want to play for you tonight. Uh, let me load it up here while I'm rambling on. Um, I want to thank you all very very much again for. Uh, for for being here i want to thank the speakers uh that come on tom mcconville chris link from germany willem nordstrand lucas Sterk, steiner robinson norway paul lee roy galan um and of course christoph shellhorn i think that's the list uh wonderful um tributes to a wonderful man i'm sure you'll all agree um all the people who sent in comments and we've had like i said over 100 viewers been amazing this show will disappear off Facebook. I'll take it off there. It'll stay forever here on the YouTube channel, Songs from the Rural Room. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I do a few live streams here with songwriters from time to time, interviewee things, as well as promoting videos of the songwriters that I record both here and on the road. Um, hope you'll become part of the community. Subscribe to the channel and follow uh, what I'm trying to do here on the channel. Um, we'll raise a glass to the, to the man. Kieran, there'll never be another one like you. We love you. We'll listen to your songs forever. Um, thank you, everybody, for, for being with us tonight. I'm going to play this little video, and I'll see you all somewhere down the road. Stay safe. Look after each other. Mind that old corona stuff. Um, and take good care of yourselves. Until we meet again, Slanja.
It's hard to remind yourself to get down on your knees. Only the good die young, they say. My time has come, it's judgment day. I don't want it. It's judgment.